All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Reza Gooding from Kakao Media, who is in Tel Aviv, Israel today. How are you doing, Reza? I am quite fine, John. It's such a pleasure to be on your podcast today. So thank you for having me. Yes, and in fact, this is a first for us because Reza has joined us despite the fact that there are rockets, <laughs> uh, they're, they're under attack by rockets uh, and, you know, have been uh, confined indoors and to bomb shelters. So, so we really do appreciate you joining us. I can't say anything particularly exciting is happening here in San Diego, <laughs> but that's kind of San Diego. Nothing, it's pretty laid back here. Nothing much really ever happens. So, you know, we have to be... Uh, we have to be grateful for that, and hopefully uh, Reza and the rest of the uh, residents of Israel will be safe today. Okay, so what we wanted to talk about was was CRM, and I think the first thing, Reza, which is it still amazes me, and obviously you know uh, part we're we're a CRM company too, but part of what really amazes me is that a lot of organizations still use Excel or spreadsheets. And, it, and you would think that, okay, well, that's probably small organizations, but it's not. There are some large organizations, even international global enterprises, who still rely on spreadsheets to run their, their sales operations. And that just doesn't seem like it's sustainable, right? You are so right, John. You do not believe that this is actually my target market for 2020 looking at businesses that have existed for more than 20 years. These are the businesses that are still run by Excel, shockingly enough, especially when they are using systems like the ERP and the Priority and the SAP. They do believe that it's important for them to still have this micromanaging, I believe, or the control because they've grown their business to multi-million dollar businesses. So these are not small startups. These are businesses that are making millions of dollars every year using an Excel sheet. So one of, my, one of my pain points or one of my challenges each time I go in there is to convince these boards of directors that it's time to move off the Excel sheets, you know. So I often have to try to show them wins about doing that and how the Excel, even it's the greatest CRM, it is the father of all CRMs, the Excel <laughs> sheet. But it's just not sufficient for today. Yeah, and and I know, and and I have seen, and, and I'm sure you have seen plenty of examples of fantastically complex uh, Excel spreadsheets with macros and all this stuff going on, and they're they're wonderful. The problem is that they're often created originally by somebody and then taken over by somebody else and somebody. And before you know it, nobody really knows how to operate the thing and it's just been there exactly. but it can't it can't be updated it's not dynamic exactly and you're so right and these are just some of the things i say another point is just it's not transferable you can't share the information openly because excel does have its limitation to how people get access to it mm -hmm. and how what data people can see in real time you see so even if you think you can just upload it to google sheets and share it there's still restrictions in terms of who do you give access to edit what? So you can't really have that deep level of control that you would want as an organization using Excel. Yeah, and the whole idea of, I mean, if you think about it now, the buyer's journey and all the different people who are involved in, in purchasing decisions and all the different touch points in an organization now from, from marketing to, to sales, to customer service, to customer success, or what all, there is no way you can have a holistic experience if you yeah. are still relying on something that you know, isn't connected to anything else. Exactly, exactly. And this is exactly one of the other bigger benefits of a CRM. It really allows you to see your prospect's journey from the minute they actually found out about you through your website to the different emails they might have opened about mm -hmm. you. And then finally, as they close to becoming a customer, to really follow these steps that these salespeople should go through in order to close them as a customer. So, you know, there's so many benefits using the CRM today that the Excel doesn't provide. And as I always mention to, to my prospects and to my clients, you know, I always say this in, in Israel, you know, Israeli bosses love to micromanage. So they mm. spend so much time always passing by the salesperson's desk every day asking, <laughs> so what happened to that lead? Did you send that email? Did that happen? 
So these are things that the CRM actually helps you know, automate and give visibility to everyone. So they do not have to ask the salespersons these questions or call them 10 o'clock in the night to find out if they spoke to that lead in America at 3 p.m. their time, you know? Yeah, yeah and I think that's a really important, important point uh, for people because, I mean, that is one of the things that drives salespeople crazy, right? And, and it drives sales managers crazy to be both sides, right? They, the salespeople hate the, the sales manager hovering over them and constantly bugging them about things. And the sales manager hates that he has no visibility into what's going on and he has to bug them. So yes. if you have a system in place where there's visibility and people are updating, it, it's a win-win for both. Yes, it is. It is a win-win for both. But I guess, you know, one of the fears that most companies have is a transition period mm -hmm. and especially getting the people and the teams to adapt to this new method. You know, just the other day, I went to one company. They have been existing since 1970. So basically, you know, they've run their business. It's a million dollar company as well. And they were very clear. They were like, who's going to use this? Nobody's going to touch the CRM. You know, it's, we, we, we work in a specific way, you know. So one of the things you really have to try to do is figure out as well how to make it easily adaptable for the yes. clients, you know, especially when it's you're talking about these very traditional companies that the adapters or the users of the system will be a bit older in age. So they're very much not really tech oriented. How mm -hmm. do you make the system easy for them? You know, and it reminds me of kind of like being in math class, basically, you know, when, when you were a student, there were some students who were slower than others yeah. and you had to break things down or repeat it 10 times before they get yeah, it. That, that was me in math class for sure. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> so this is the whole thing, even with implementing a CRM, I think a big part of it is the training period and mm -hmm. really trying to make it easy and trying to give them baby yeah. steps and not trying to show them all the powerful tools all at once. Yeah, I, I think that's another critical point is uh, that people often do try and boil the ocean and that's the wrong thing to do. And that you should, uh, you know, set implementation milestones and just yes. get them using, you know, get your salespeople using some of the, the basic functionality that will make their lives better. And I think that's the thing is you have to, it has to be a win-win. There has to be something in it for the salesperson. Um, and so when you're rolling it out, you've got to make sure, to be honest, you've got to make sure you roll out the benefits to the salespeople first before you start like worrying too much about the benefits to you. Exactly, exactly. And even look at the other key stakeholders in the system, you know, so even if the managers or the management team really need to see the reports, how do you generate better reports for them that makes it easier for them to receive mm -hmm. these reports in real time? that they too don't have to bother these salespeople for these things, you know? So this is some of the key metrics and the key things I do whenever I go into an implementation process with a client, you know? Yeah, because the problem obviously is that, uh, you know, traditional CRM and the experiences that a lot of people have had with CRM over the years was that they weren't really built from a sales perspective, you know? They were, exactly. they were built exactly. from a command and control and a management perspective. So you have to, you have to over, overcome that uh, you know, reticence or reluctance uh, to engage with this. So you have to be able to show the benefits there. But I think the other thing is, there's also a, just a realistic side to it is that as business becomes more complex, like you today, you can't run a business today without some kind of accounting software, right? Yes, I mean, you wouldn't, exactly. you wouldn't do it with pen and paper now or whatever, you know, you have, you have some accounting software. There's no way that companies can really operate in this more complex world, uh, you know, is sales without having a CRM system. Yes, you're absolutely right. And it's even more so why they even begin to get interested is because the competitiveness out there is harsh. Mm -hmm. They yeah. are losing their market share because their competitors, especially these savvy startup companies that could do something just as well as they are, are using CRM. So they are talking to their customers directly now. They are reaching bigger market shares. So this is something that they had to consider as well, these traditional companies, because I think what they missed in their time of growing from the 70s to now is that they usually use something which is the field marketing process, really. You know, they mm -hmm. had boots on the ground, finding their contacts and making sure they close those deals on the ground. But it's just not sufficient or scalable because you cannot have an employee base of 20,000 people, just salespeople all over the world. And just realistically, you won't reach everyone like that. So you do have to rely on some level of digital channels to reach your prospects today. 
and a CRM really helps you do that. So this is one, re one way and one factor I see really playing into getting those who are still depending on their Excel, realizing that their market share is shrinking and they need to do something quickly in order to stay relevant. Yeah, and I think uh, the speed factor is, is, a, is a great one also just to underline because you can't move quickly and you can't be you know flexible and all of that if you're if you're relying on something static you know like an excel spreadsheet or you're relying on people to update and go on network drives or whatever you're housing them or in the cloud it doesn't matter uh you need that up-to-date information at your fingertips you need the tools at your fingertips so yeah you're correct you're you're absolutely at a competitive disadvantage if you're using outmoded ways of of uh, of trying to operate exactly exactly so they really have to consider all of these facets to just mm -hmm. realize that Excel doesn't give them any of those things we've discussed so far. <laughs> yeah, no, ab absolutely. And I think the other part is that, um, I mean, going forward, it's, it's, it's not that CRM is going to go away. It's going to become more important, to be honest, you know, than ever, because in many ways it is kind of the central operating system of a company because it's the part where the revenue and the customer information lives. But it's also the fact that uh, I think uh, when it starts to work and be integrated well with all your other systems, then you start to see everything come alive. And I think that's where a lot of these companies are going to suddenly realize, wow, if I have my you know, marketing automation system or I have my ERP system working with my CRM, et cetera, et cetera, everything starts to flow together in a much more coherent fashion. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But I'd love to ask you a question, John. Yes. Sir. As you are a CRM a mm -hmm. company as well, what do you think are the how does a how does a company really decide which CRM to choose, you know? Because there's so many options today. So how do you really guide them in understanding which to choose? Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's a fantastic question because yes, there are so many. It's not exactly a, a it's not exactly an underserved market, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are a lot of options out there. I think the first thing uh, is that to really understand what somebody is looking to do. And that sounds really simplistic. But the fact is that, unfortunately, as you know, the, even the term CRM has become, it, it has become so broad yeah, that sometimes exactly. you'll have, I mean, sometimes we'll have people contact us and they're looking for, they think they're looking for a CRM system. But by the time you've talked to them, they realize that they're looking for a a customer service system or they're looking right. for, or they're looking for a pure marketing automation system or right. they're looking for a couple of CRM features and then a bunch of features. like we had one recently like we're in a digital rights management i mean so and and so i think the first thing to do is to really have a, get an understanding of what the customer is looking for like for instance our CRM we just do sales that's all we do we don't do mm -hmm. customer service we don't do marketing automation all of that so we really look at you know getting getting down is sales process is that important to you is um um, is understanding the landscape of your buyer and their organizations and the relationships that things that are important to you, uh, and then and then you can really kind of focus in on on the kind of needs. So I, I think that's I think that's the the key, Reza, is to really understand what they're looking for from a CRM because unfortunately the term has become so broad that when people often don't understand kind of what the core functions of a CRM really are. Yeah, yeah, you're so you're so very right. And again, you know, as I often deal with founders of startups or companies, you know, they're so much into the product, they really don't understand the systems that they need to support yeah. their product going to market. So they often just say, Okay, I want a CRM, I want a marketing automation. They want everything mm -hmm. at once, but oftentimes they waste a lot of money trying out all these different tools before mm -hmm. they really settle down into something that is working for them. So I really think these kinds of conversations are important so people can educate themselves before yeah. they even start a discussion with a CRM company about getting their services or choosing the platform. Because as you rightfully said, they have to understand what it is they need at this stage in their business and really what they're looking to do in the next short term or medium term period. 
Yeah, and the, and to be honest, the, the problem is getting worse some, somewhat instead of better because you know the latest trend is you hear your sales enablement a lot, right? And yeah. then and then sales enablement in itself, that term is ill defined because sometimes you have sales enablement which seems to, you know some companies have sales enablement tools, but really they look a little bit more like marketing automation tools, yeah. just yeah. just kind of. Uh, uh, tailored to salespeople, you go okay, and then and then we would say that we're actually sales enablement because that's all we do is enable sales. But again, unfortunately, it's this constant, uh, it's this constant like people redefining or expanding the definition of things. I think causes a lot of confusion in the market. You are so right. You're so right. And not everybody has the time to keep up to date with all of these mm -hmm. um, nuances and all of these little coming outs that, <laughs> that are being born every day. So they do get lost in all the terminology and all the marketing hype and all the words we can use to help all the buzzwords we keep using for them. Yeah. And I think the other thing, just to just to come back to what you're saying, I think, and you probably come across this a lot yourself, is that what often happens, as you said, is uh, a company reaches a certain size or something happens or maybe they miss revenue and they think, oh, we've got to do something. And they turn around and, uh, and they look around and they say, Reza, go find us a CRM, right? And so some person in the company is suddenly given the task of going finding a CRM. They have no idea really what they're looking for and they just maybe do some research online and start reaching out. And that's where I think you know, people like yourself and when we, when we engage with people is really helping people understand uh, and, and dig down and get to what the real business drivers and needs are and whether in fact they are, whether um, you know, CRM is the answer for them. But I think yeah. that's what happens. I think that happens a lot. I think a lot, a lot of times, it's very reactive. People going out suddenly go, uh, uh, you know, revenues are going up, and we need to keep track. And get a CRM, or revenues have gone down. We need a CRM. Yeah, yeah. And you know, just to round off, one of the challenges I see as well when people adopt CRMs is the management of it eventually. So yes. eventually, they take it, and everything is good. The setup <laughs> is fine because we are there holding their hands. But the minute we step out of the engagement and they don't have a responsible person who's dedicated to managing mm -hmm. that CRM, it all goes down the drain from there. So, yeah. you know, this they have to understand is also a very important role. They need to have a dedicated person who is really managing it because the CRM foundation is the contacts, right? So it's as good as the contacts they're collecting and the information they're collecting on those contacts. So mm -hmm. if they're not mining this very carefully, they find themselves not knowing anything that's happening in their CRM eventually. Yeah. And I think the other thing there, there is that the executive sponsorship has to stay in place as well. Yes. Because it's and, and this doesn't and this isn't just a CRM problem, this is a software problem. And, and often any any kind of initiative that you undertake at an organization is sometimes at the beginning, executive management will come in and be okay, uh, yeah, we're 100 percent behind this or whatever. And then once it's rolled out, you never hear from them again. And therefore, the the people in this case, the salespeople, go, "Oh, that was just that was just the flavor of the month initiative. They don't care about it anymore, so I don't care about it anymore." Yes, it has yes. to be reinforced. Yes, you are so so right. So this was a great conversation. I love yeah. the way we managed to sum up everything. <laughs> both of us having this CRM experience, <laughs> I think your listeners will have a very rounded view of what it is happened and what it is that's needed. For CRM, so maybe we sum it up, John, and you give yeah, one I, point, I give my point, and then we come up with all the points that we say you should consider um, before getting a CRM. Yeah, yeah. No, we can round it up now. I actually, what we normally do is I give you an opportunity now just to tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Okay, so what I do basically is implement CRMs all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I do also the wider part of the marketing automation as well sure. and the service because I work on a platform called HubSpot. Mm -hmm. So they have all three parts on their system. So oftentimes, because I work with startups with very low budgets, they don't have the ability to invest in different software at the same time because they're just getting funding and they want to minimize their spend. Mm -hmm. So HubSpot is often a good start for them because they will be able to do everything from sales, marketing, and service in one platform. So my job really is just I go in, I like you, I have to understand all of their challenges, what they're really looking for, even help them define their sales processes mm -hmm. because oftentimes yeah. they don't know what their sales processes are. So this is a huge part of my task. 
Um, 50% of my time is spent, you know, educating the management, especially as you said, and keeping up, um, making sure that they realize the buy-in, as you said, is not just for this stage of the engagement, but for the entirety to maintain it even. So a lot of it is just really getting them accustomed to the responsibility that it takes for them to actually implement and manage and maintain that system after it's in place. Yeah, fantastic. And the company again is uh, Cacao Cacao Media. And uh, listen, Renzo, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today and particularly under the circumstances uh, there. So... um, this is me, John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeline of CRM here in San Diego. Wishing you well, Reza, and all the residents of Israel well at, at this time, and hope uh, everything calms down quickly and you can get back outdoors. Of course. I have more CRMs to implement. I need to be outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Thank you. Thank you, John.